From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to your statewide edition of Montana This Morning on this Wednesday, October 2nd. I'm Augusta McDonald here with Miller Robson. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Augusta. Happy t uh, Wednesday. It is Happy Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. everybody. <laughs> it's been we've one of those weeks. It's been a crazy yeah, week. Yeah, it's been a long week and we're <laughs> talking. He's got some sick kids at home. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not feeling like a million bucks. I think maybe. Yeah, I think that. it's starting to go through. It's you that, know, that seasonal. Like that, so. Yep. Mm -hmm, that seasonal shift. Vitamin C. Everybody hang in there. We're yes, going to be okay. Vitamin C. All right. So uh, we're, the, the big concern today is going to be the, the winds and the fire weather concerns, especially uh, Eastern side of the state and we're going to show you here in just a second uh, all the different watches and warnings that are in uh, in place right now and will be in place as we head toward the weekend. Uh, temperatures across the region right now. We got 55 in Helena, 67 in Missoula, 60 in Kalispell, 62 in Butte. Uh, here in Billings, we're sitting at 66 up in Lewistown at 57. Glasgow, 61, 57 in Glendive, 52 in Mile City down in Sheridan, where it's 62 and 67 in Cody. So much warmer this morning than it was yesterday morning when we saw some areas dip down into the 20s. All right, here are your watches, your warnings and your advisories. There's a lot of stuff to break down with this and we will do that with the main forecast coming up. All right, Miller, thank you so much for tracking all of that. And in political headlines this morning, during Monday night's Senate debate on Montana PBS, tester pushed Sheehy to apologize for insensitive comments made about tribal members. The reality is, uh, yeah, insensitive. I come from the military, as many of our tribal members do. You know, we make insensitive jokes and, and probably off color sometimes. And, and, you know, I'm an adult. I'll take accountability for that. But let's not distract from the issues that our tribal communities are suffering. And you can say, look, I'll take responsibility. But, you know, apologies matter. And how you treat people matter. And if you treat them with disrespect, other people will disrespect them. So, like I said to begin with, you're a big guy. Just apologize. You apologize for opening the border? I didn't open the border. On Saturday, uh, Q2 will be replaying, or uh, Montana, the Montana Television Network will be replaying um, that debate, so don't, be, uh, don't miss that. And in statewide news, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks released the final statewide grizzly bear management plan. It aims to manage grizzlies while they're still federally protected, and in the case they're turned over to the state for management, it prioritizes connectivity between ecosystems and working with people and communities to avoid conflict with bears. FWP says the introduction of the new plan and the already established framework aids in healthy and sustainable grizzly bear populations. The new plan is statewide and replaces the separate plans in western and southwest Montana with a focus on conflict management, research and monitoring, and education and outreach. In addition to the release of the management plan, FWP introduced a public dashboard to track grizzly mortalities. Montana Millionaire tickets go on sale in one month. Tickets have been selling out faster and faster every year. So to meet the demand this year, the Montana Lottery is selling more tickets and offering more prizes. MTN's Tom Buchanan breaks down what's new for 2024. We are officially one month out from Montana Millionaire. And with 500,000 tickets being sold this year, it's the largest Montana Millionaire yet. I think we like it just as much as our players because it's just exciting it's we prepare like all year from january 1st until november 1st in its 18th year montana millionaire will draw from a pool of half a million tickets or however many they sell but if last year is any indication those tickets will likely sell out within a few hours last year's tickets sold out in just five hours the quickest ever people are usually lined up by 5 30 in the morning we're encouraging people to get there earlier. We're also encouraging businesses to open a little earlier just to help with the crowd. This year, there will be four $1 million grand prizes announced on December 26th. Additionally, there will be one $250,000 winner, $2,300 $500 instant winners, and $4,500 $100 instant winners. Tickets cost $20 each and go on sale at 5.30 a.m. on Friday, November 1st. Tickets can be purchased at participating stores and Montana Lottery terminals. The more millionaires we can give out, the better. But um, yeah, we just it's just a really exciting time. It's a nice Christmas present. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. 
The Flathead County Board of Adjustments is uh, deciding this week whether or not to grant a conditional use permit to allow a pre-release center in Kalispell. Flathead County commissioners approved a resolution, uh, resolution of support, ruling two to one in favor of the plan. The proposed facility would be located on East Oregon Street on the border of Kalispell and Evergreen and would repurpose the existing Greenwood Village Inn and Suites. The pre-release center would house 90 men and would be fully operated by the Department of Corrections. Some are concerned about the center's proximity to their neighborhood. As of news time, the County Board of Adjustment is still debating whether to grant the permit for the project. Uh, that meeting began yesterday. We're going to have results later on in our newscasts. And more than 700 workers are now looking for new jobs in Stillwater County, while an entire community is worrying about its future. This all stems from Sabanye Stillwater's decision to cut hundreds of positions, leaving employees, their families, and an entire county in flux. Many attended a reverse career fair in Columbus Tuesday with over 60 potential employers on site and almost 100 total when adding in remote opportunities. County Commissioner Tyrell Hamilton says they knew the revenue was dropping at the mine and took proactive measures. About four years ago, three to four budget years ago, that number sat at about 12 and a half million. Last year, uh, that number dropped all the way down to about three million. Hamilton says they'll be asking for significantly less than mill levies from property owners. That layoff begins November 12th. Montana's oldest and wisest celebrated a pretty important milestone in Billings. For 55 years, every October, centarians from the four corners of Montana gather to celebrate while turning 100. In an event, it's an event everybody looks forward to where these remarkable Montanans are honored for their longevity. There's currently over 30 in the state. Eight were able to make it yesterday in person. Some say they plan on attending many more of these celebrations in the future. Ten more years will kind of slow me down. I'm feeling good and I'm enjoying the day being with my family and friends. Folks said they had a great time at that event and are looking forward to next year. The 2018 Farm Bill has once again expired with the year-long extension ending Monday night. While many programs will continue to run through the end of the year, deepening political divisions continue to delay its passage. MTN's Tommy Lynch shares what this means for local producers. John Wicks has been a Montana farmer since he was 21 years old. I think I crop about 3,000 acres of cash crop and, you know, we try and do about 1,500 acres of cover crop in diverse uh, rotations. For the past eight years, his focus has been on organic farming and he has seen firsthand the holes in the farm bill. You know, in some ways, crop insurance works really good for organic with the price factored in. And we need to see, you know, there's like whole farm insurance where you can plant about any, we need to expand on those kind of programs that are a little more diverse. With the farm bill expiring, many rural farmers such as John are left to try and figure out what to do before the worst arrives. The farm bill always needs improvement and uh, working on, but uh, there's been some pretty good advances, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Wicks wants to see the Risk Management Agency, or RMA, expanded, ensuring things like cover cropping, where a crop is grown in order to enrich the soil itself. Cover cropping, you get penalized for using a cover crop instead of, you know, maybe getting a discount on it. So we'd like to see some things there where you're kind of rewarded for doing some of these management things and implementing them that actually are, you know, less risky than not adapting. Wicks advocates for dual enrollment for financial protection programs and hopes the nutrition title makes it on to the next iteration of the bill. Programs like SNAP and I think, you know, feeding people is a lot of farming. So these programs, the nutrition title needs to be in the farm bill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got to take care of people in our communities. If they need a little help then and feeding them, then that's what farming is. Wicks recently attended the National Farmers Union's legislative fly-in in Washington, D.C., where he felt optimistic about the future. Every legislator that I spoke with was pretty open and they knew what needed to be done. And a lot of them, I think, were ready to go to work. He expects something to get passed in the spring, and it's more about making sure that farms survive until then. There's going to be some uncertainty that's a little scary. Um, but I think just being in D.C. and, you know, visiting with Republican and Democrat, uh, you know, legislators, they all want to work together on this and they know how important agriculture is for the nation. And, you know, keeping family farms going is a matter of, you know, it's a matter of national security. And ordinary citizens should get involved in making sure the next bill passed is the right one. It affects their life three times a day. Every time you eat, you know, there's a, it comes from agriculture. 
Right now, lawmakers are still trying to work out a deal. The extension expired September 30th, but many programs are still active through the end of the year due to how they were structured. In Great Falls, I'm Tommy Lynch, MTN News.